Well, thank you. Uh, thank you, Jocelyn. Good afternoon. I have to say, we're sitting at the table there. And for those of us that would know Jocelyn, she comes from the south coast of the province, which is the largest aquaculture site in Newfoundland and Labrador. And when I talk about aquaculture, I mean it's where all our salmon farms are. And Jocelyn's eating chicken. <laughs> so, good afternoon, everyone, and thank you. And I want to, want to start by thanking Fortis and the Canadian Electricity Association for this opportunity to participate in what is the first Fortis Energy Exchange. But like Barry, too, I want to recognize and take a minute to acknowledge that this is National Aboriginal Day. And as not only the Premier of the province, but also the person and minister responsible for intergovernmental and in Indigenous affairs, I encourage all Newfoundlanders and Labradorians to reflect on what we have as a very unique heritage. We have some diverse cultures and the important contributions that our Indigenous peoples in this province and the contribution that they make to Canada as a whole. And as been mentioned at our table, this is really an exciting week for the energy industry in our province. Just yesterday, I had the pleasure of speaking to the national and the international audience at the 2017 NOIA conference. The numbers are up some 30% this year, so there's a lot of people watching what's happening uh, with the industry in, uh, in this industry sector in, in uh, Newfoundland and Labrador. But today I'm excited to join this group of senior leaders in the electricity and gas sectors, representatives from the industry. We have associations represented here. We have utilities that are represented here, as well as some of the regulators. So we're in for a discussion on what is about clean power in North America, in particular for me in Newfoundland and Labrador, and the potential that we have to be a major player in this area. But before I begin, I sincerely hope, has been mentioned already, that you do get a chance to explore what a wonderful city this is, one of the oldest in North America, but yet our province as a whole and some of the remarkable sights and sounds that this province has to offer. At the NOIA conference yesterday, I had the pleasure of also introducing a new web video that we'll be using to showcase Newfoundland and Labrador, not just as a place for you to visit, but also as a place for you to come, to live, to learn, and to do business. And it builds off what makes this province something that's very special and very unique, something that I refer to as a rare find. And in a few minutes, near the end of this speech, I just want to share with you my own video. Barry, you had a great one on Fortis, but I wanted just to build on that a little bit for our province. But here at the Fortis Energy Exchange, it's easy to see what this province is capable of when it comes to business ingenuity and global success. From what was a small company that first put the lights on in St. John's in, 19, or in 1885, Fortis has grown into a leader in the North American utility industry with assets of approximately some $48 billion. Their success has been literally been generations in making. And this success kind of hit some new heights last year when CEO Barry Perry rang the bell at the opening of the New York Stock Exchange. It's been a great year for Barry. He's been also recognized by Memorial University, too, for his accomplishments. So it could be said that two wonderful things from Newfoundland and Labrador left their mark on New York City this year. Come from away on Broadway and Fortis on Wall Street. So we're very proud of both those accomplishments, but very proud of the amazing corporate citizens that, that Fortis is here in our province. Fortis was and continues to be a shining example of how local opportunity can expand into what is a global success story. But it also speaks to what you can achieve when you have a vision. Our government sees our involvement in the energy sector as being vital to our plans to strengthen our economy and restore fiscal balance. That is why we made the initiatives to advance developments in the energy sector and the focus in our way forward that Jocelyn just, just mentioned. An example of our commitment is helping energy guide producers through provincial policy and regulatory frameworks. We are putting supports in place because there is an abundance of opportunity 
in Newfoundland and Labrador. So today, I want to speak to you on our clean energy alternatives and our potential to create more global success stories as we meet not only our domestic needs, but also to support the North American marketplace. The Lower Churchill is a key component to our province's energy resource initiatives. Built in the 1960s, the Churchill Falls project currently has the capacity to produce some 5,500 megawatts of electricity. And Muskrat Falls and Gull Island, when you combine those two potentials together, that's over 3,000 megawatts, all on the same river. And currently, as you know, we are focused on finishing the 824 megawatt hydroelectricity generating facility at Muskrat Falls. But we are also focused on interconnecting to the North American electricity grid, and we do this by the Labrador link plus the maritime link. So to date, the overall construction pro process or pro progress is almost 71% complete and we are continuing on a path of achieving construction goals. So now you all know the challenges in the current situation of the Muskrat Falls project. It's widely known. And I think this really highlights the need to find strong partnerships and engage with the private sector when undertaking those massive hydroelectricity projects. Now once the Muskrat Falls project is in service, over 98% of our electricity will be generated from renewable resources. And that only begins the discussion on where our energy generating capacity can go in the years to come. The possibility of development of the much larger Gull Island site holds the potential to supply some 2,250 megawatts of clean renewable energy. Gull Island could open up opportunities for the export of clean energy through expanded interprovincial and electricity trade and cooperation. Now, having discussed hydroelectricity, I also want now to turn to another source of energy that our province has in abundance, and that's wind. We all know that Newfoundland and Labrador is no stranger to wind. Matter of fact, we even refer to ourselves as wind swept in our provincial anthem. But as you are fully aware, wind is an excellent source of clean, renewable electricity. And our province has the potential to be home to some of the best wind power resources in North America. Currently, Newfoundland and Labrador Hydro has a power purchase agreement with two 27 megawatt private onshore wind projects. In Ramia, which is an island off our island, is located on the south coast and there, there are two exciting initiatives in development, one of which is a private wind farm which is designed to reduce diesel usage. And in Newfoundland and Labrador, we have quite a few of our small communities still using diesel as its main source of power. The other on Ramia is, is been undertaken by Nalcor, and it includes another 100 kilowatts turbines, two of those 100 kilowatt turbines. So this will use the excess power to create and store hydrogen and later convert it to electricity. So by using wind and hydrogen, using this combination of technology to supplement Ramia, to supplement and take them after diesel requirements, this R&D project offers a real-time, real-scale example of a community that is increasing their use of renewable power. This example can be used in the future for other off-grid communities that rely on diesel power. This important work as we begin to reduce our carbon footprint. But it also supports our government in the analysis of how best to integrate alternate energy sources in coastal Labrador. Very difficult to get Labrador on a grid. And on a large scale issues like these, working together with our provincial and federal counterparts is crucial to our success. One of the most impactful examples of these types of collective frameworks is the Canada Free Trade Agreement. People from across the country are seeking sources that are clean and developed in an environmentally friendly manner. The Canada Free Trade Agreement, which will be finalized, which was finalized in April and comes into effect on Canada's 150th birthday on July 1st, marks an important step in meeting these expectations. This new agreement 
will help bring more transparency on how Canadian government regulates the movement of goods, services, investment, and labor across our country. And for the first time, electricity trade coverage will be extended to include the electricity sector. Newfoundland and Labrador has the capacity to solve other jurisdictions' energy deficiencies in a green and renewable way. And it should not be underestimated how exciting this is for us. The creation of a regulatory framework governing electricity transmission provides specific rules, but it also builds on the principles of an open access and non-discrimination that were outlined in the Canadian Energy Strategy. In addition to the development of these rules, Newfoundland and Labrador was asked by the other provinces and the federal government to engage with Quebec to discuss electricity transmission. Now, I've always said that I would be open to exploring opportunities that could benefit our province. But being open to discussions with Quebec could help position this province to maximize our natural resources and bring new wealth to Newfoundlanders and Labradorians. Now, I appreciate that Canadian Premiers and the Prime Minister Trudeau recognize the issue of electricity transmission as important to Canada's economic development. And through the Canadian Free Trade Agreement, Newfoundland and Labrador has never been better positioned to maximize our full potential on energy resources. And this positions local businesses for greater success on the national stage. While significant work, significant work remains to be done to open, to truly open up transmission across Canada, we are making progress highlighting this issue. We are also communicating our willingness to find a path forward that supports interprovincial and cooperation and greater efficiencies. With that being said, our doors are always open to building relationships that provide opportunities to further develop our energy resources. And to successfully develop these resources locally, nationally or globally, government and industries need to work together. And as I mentioned before, we have the capability within our vast resources to help other jurisdictions meet their renewable energy targets. Cross-territory transmission has been a long-standing priority for Newfoundland and Labrador. And to make sure we keep this priority in focus, we have been active, we've been an active member on a number of different national forums and initiatives that will support greater exchanges of energy across our borders. As an example, the annual Energy and Mines Ministers Conference, the Atlantic Energy Gateway, the Pan-Canadian Framework on Clean Growth and Climate Change, these are all initiatives that allow us to communicate and collaborate, much like you're doing here today. But these forums can develop policies that facilitate new opportunities. And we can work to overcome barriers to transmitting energy across our jurisdictions. We are also involved in the Regional Electricity Cooperation and Strategic Infrastructure Initiative. Now, if that's not a committee that's put together by politicians, I don't know what could be. <laughs> but these are groups which include the federal government, the Atlantic governments, and utilities, including Nova Scotia Power, but also including Fortis uh, Electric and PEI. So together, we are identifying the best new infrastructure developments to reduce carbon emissions in a way that balances both social and economic needs. Because we can't forget, we share one region on one planet. Greater regional collaboration is the next logical step for this industry as we collectively tackle climate change. This is now heightened that our province is connected to Nova Scotia through the maritime link but it is also leading the Canadian energy strategy with our partners in Alberta, New Brunswick, and Manitoba. The strategy was developed two years ago by our provincial ministers, and it was endorsed by our Canadian premiers at a subsequent meeting. Through this strategy, premiers across the country are tasked, we've tasked our energy ministers with making progress on implementing four priority areas. And these include climate change and transition to a low carbon economy, energy efficiency, technology and innovation, and how we deliver energy to people. 
Technology and innovation is a priority area for our action because it can benefit both remote off-grid communities. But it is also the forefront of our national conversations. Now, in addition to those relationships with our national colleagues, we continue to work through the New England Governors and the Eastern Canadian Premiers Forum. Our next meeting with this, with this group will be near the end of August, and it'll be in Charlottetown, PEI. So this province is dedicated to maintaining with an open dialogue with our counterparts in the United States. By doing this, we can better understand and capitalize on the market opportunities for energy trade. And as part of our future energy transfer, the proposed Atlantic Link, which is a 900 megawatt transmission line, well, that could play an important role in capitalizing on international opportunities. Now, if this is constructed, it would offer the possibility of delivering clean energy right to the center of New England from here in Atlantic Canada. It's still in its proposal changes or stages, and it would be owned by AMIRA. This project would have the ability to provide clean energy mandated by the Commonwealth of Massachusetts. And as you all know, that New England is one of the most lucrative electricity markets in North America. An expansion of the transmission from the Maritimes into New England could improve market access for our existing energy. But it could also improve the economics of new renewable electricity development in Newfoundland and Labrador. And as premiers, we are taking steps to ensure there are strong ties to the United States. And just two weeks ago, I attended, a, I attended with uh, seven, other, seven other Canadian premiers on a mission to Washington, D.C. Now, the purpose of the mission was to discuss Canada-U.S. relationships, to discuss trade issues, and, of course, NAFTA modernization. These meetings also provided me with an opportunity to promote Newfoundland and Labrador as a contributor of reliable and secure energy for the United States. And as we continue to develop major hydroelectricity projects that provide high quality, clean, renewable electricity, we can also help other jurisdictions, including the United States, meet its energy needs. So as Premier of Newfoundland and Labrador, I am delighted to showcase our province its new energy potential. This province has much more to showcase. So in a few minutes, I, I already mentioned the reference, a, a web video that will be used to showcase our province, but we showcase it simply to say this. Newfoundland and Labrador is an attractive place to do business, an attractive place to get an education, and to build a new life through immigration, but also to support our economy to export and trade initiatives. Because as I said, Newfoundland and Labrador is indeed a rare find. We are home to traditional industries that are operating side by side with groundbreaking technologies. Our educational institutions, our culture, our athletes, and our Broadway musicals are all based on us. And they are capturing, capturing attention on the world stage. And our businesses, like Fortis, will continue to demonstrate that local companies can and still will continue to shape global industries. You don't have to be based in London or Toronto or Tokyo to succeed. Success and remarkable things happen right here in Newfoundland and Labrador.